Happy Friday, everybody. Andy and Steve from wagertalk.com. Welcome to the Road to Millions on Friday, October 20th. Let's just get it out of the way. Hit that like button. Leave us a comment. Tell us your wins. We got to get some positive vibes going into the weekend. We got a great show. Six NFL best bets out of the prop markets that we're looking at. We're going to give you an MLB fate of the day. It's a big name, too. It's a big, big name. Maybe the biggest in the playoffs right now. Uh, We're going to go over a sleeper of the day, a stat of the day, and then Steve and I will give out our survivor picks. And based on what I've seen in the comment section, the Seahawks better win. (laughs) Yes, sir. (laughs) Every team on by. So uh, positive vibes. Not a whole lot going on. I will will say Drake uh, gave us a good one for uh, the unbreakable sports records. Uh, 2001 Miami Hurricanes, if the offense never scored a point, they still would have gone eight and four. Their defensive <laughs> scoring won them eight games. That's a great one. That's a really, That's awesome. really good look. So, uh, Cranon liked that I talked about hitting the guy with one eye in the right side of his head. Uh, <laughs> uh, Scott has Mostert. Start off 3-0, and then lost Justin Jefferson. Yeah, that's a bummer. You might, uh, yeah. That Jefferson injury, man, that's going to be like where Jefferson comes back and he's on like teams that are like out of the playoffs in fantasy leagues. <laughs> so, seriously. Yeah, yeah. So, going with Travis Etienne anytime touchdown, that was a good one. Uh, so, thank God you didn't go with Calvin Ridley to be productive. Yikes. Oof. Yikes, man. <laughs> what is going on with Calvin Ridley and that Jags team? So, Week one seems like a different life now. <laughs> He's had two good games, and the rest have been yeah. mysterious. And, of course, because it's NFL, Trevor Lawrence on a bad knee, game-time decision, career-high rushing yards. Of course, Makes everyone sense, yeah. everyone had that. So, All right, guys, let's get into it, and let's go to our six NFL best bets here. <clears throat> Steve, you want to get us started? Kenneth Walker over 71 and a half rushing. Yeah, he's he's went over this total in two of his last three games, and he had 62 in the third. Um, he's just been a real workhorse the past month or so. 17 plus, so consistent too. 17 plus carries in his last four games. He really carved up Arizona last season as well. He had two of his best games of his career against Arizona. Actually, 109 rushing yards and 97 rushing yards against them last year. We got the Cardinals giving up the fourth most yards to opposing running backs, 112 yards a game on the ground. And they're really struggling with yards um, after contact, and and Walker thrives in that situation. Uh, This number has definitely shut up a little bit over, you know, what it was last week or the week prior. But at 71.5, I still like it against this Cardinals team, and I'm going to be taking the over on this one this week. Love it, Kenneth Walker. Yeah, the the book's – Kind of the books got out in front of this one, but I mean, surely he can keep up his really good his really good numbers on uh, on, on his rushing total here. So, Steve, I'm going back to Josh Dobbs. Uh, you know, a good friend Jim Malero was asking if we hold grudge, or no, Andrew McGinnis was asking if we hold grudges. And there's a MMA fighter that we're holding a grudge against, big time. But I don't know. I like. Josh Dobbs, last five games, 41, 55, 48, 1, and 47 on his rushing yards. The gambling gods were just making fun of us at this point. And, uh, of course, we put out the play uh, where he had one yard rushing. I'm just going back to it. It's just uh, – I'm just going back to it. They, You know, they – the, this is a, a Seahawks team that uh, I think is, is going to be able to put some pressure on Dobbs. And now that Kyler Murray's coming back, I think Dobbs is going to show off. I think he's going to try and have some highlight reels. This isn't a guy that's going to throw the ball away, not when your replacement's coming in in the next couple weeks. So I think he tucks and runs as opposed to throwing the ball away. He's really mobile. It's a pretty good, surprising Seattle defense. I think they're better than we thought. So I'll go back to Dobbs over rushing. It's, it's pretty low, so. Uh, you're going under on a rushing prop here with Jonathan Taylor, my boy, going up against uh, the Browns. Yeah, so Taylor's still sharing, obviously sharing snaps with Zach Moss, and he's really yet to get going so far this season. This is going to be a brutal matchup for him. This Browns defense, we keep talking about how great they looked against all season, but against the 49ers in particular last week. Um, they've only allowed two running backs to clear this total this season. Gus Edwards with only 48 and Joe Mixon with only 56. So just eking by this total, if, if, if ever, 
They are their number one uh, at contact in the backfield at 54%. The next best team is Seattle at 36%. If Taylor's getting hit in the backfield consistently and he just can't get going and get moving, he's not going to get over this total. It seems a little bit high. Give me the under on this one at 44 and a half. I'm with you on this one. I got to tell you from a Colts perspective, I don't know why they would run Jonathan Taylor a lot this year. You have Zach yeah. Moss, who apparently is like, what, a top five running back in the league? Where did this come from? Uh, so they signed Taylor to the long-term deal. Richardson's out for the year. I'm not sure what you're playing for. I don't know why you wouldn't just give Moss as many carries as humanly possible. And just like, I, if I was the Colts, I would let like Zach Moss be the starter and let Jonathan Taylor come in and spell him. Why, why would you want to put a bunch of wear and tear on the, on that running back you just signed? So yeah, I agree. Jerome, I'm going to go to the same game. Jerome Ford over 55 and a half rushing Colts have injuries on the defensive line, 84 yards against San Francisco. Love the Cleveland committed to the run 34 rushes for 160 yards. I love that Kareem Hunt play last week. Uh, We were laughing that if you notice, like he hasn't practiced this week. So it's like the one game they gave him a bunch of carries. It was pretty obvious he wasn't wasn't ready for all the (laughs) all the contact and wear and tear. So I think this is a Jerome Ford Kareem Hunt game. I don't see a number out for Kareem Hunt. Um, I'm assuming Kareem Hunt's going to play. I'm sure he's just a little bit sore, but yeah, Jerome Ford. I love what he did last week, and this Colts have injuries on the defensive line. This isn't the defensive. This isn't the same defensive line I've been telling everyone is the best unit on the Colts. This is different. So, give me Jerome Ford. I'll go over um, in this Colts and Browns game. You're going back to DJ Moore over 52 and a half receiving. I I, I get the reasoning. Talk it out. Yeah, I mean, talking about holding grudges. This is the guy that cost us. Our five percent play just last week. No, no, week, no. So. I got to tell you, he did not cost it. Justin Field. And the play calling in the first half cost us on that one. It wasn't DJ Moore's fault. He wasn't the one not throwing the ball to himself. It is true, but it was the it, is it the play? We're going back to the well here, though, on one that cost us a five percent loss. And I mean, he had fifty one last week, though, with Badgett doing most of that work. I mean, I think he caught like maybe one pass from Justin Fields before Fields left the game. Now they get a full week to work together and get, you know, build a rapport with each other. He's just been a target machine with seven plus targets on his last five games. The the Raiders, they're, you know, they're middle of the pack against wide receivers as far as yardage goes, but uh, someone has to catch the ball here. And, and it looked like Badgett was looking towards more, uh, more than anybody. Uh, forgive the pun on words on that one, unintentional, but give me his over at 52 and a half. It seems really low. He could catch one pass that would put him over this. He's, he's very explosive. We've seen him post a hundred yards um, multiple times in the last month or so. So we'll, we'll take the over at 52 and a half again. I'm going back to Baker. I talked about him on bet on it. It was two thirty two and a half, and I was like, Holy cow, that number is big. <laughs> they dropped it 10 yards. So obviously I wasn't the move. only one. I still like it uh, under two twenty two. Just keep fading these quarterbacks that are facing the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, C.J. Stroud went under his posted passing total. Bryce Young, lowest passing total of the year. Trevor Lawrence, lowest passing total of the year against the Falcons. Sam Howell, they had his uh, passing total at like 240. I think he had 151. So they just don't give up big big yardage games. A.J. Terrell has been fantastic. Baker had 206 against the Lions, and the Lions are known for a, a rush defense, not necessarily their pass. He had 246 against New Orleans uh, when they blew out New Orleans, 146 against Philadelphia. He had 317 against Chicago, but that's a pretty horrific uh, pass defense, and then only 173 against Minnesota. So I think A.J. Terrell is going to be able to take away, prob- I don't know, probably Evans. Um, and I just don't – this number just seems really, really big. And if if the Falcons if, – if the game is close, which it should be, or the Falcons are ahead, you know you're going to get a big dose of Bijan Robinson and Tyler Algiero just working that clock and uh, maybe some less possessions and less attempts for Baker Mayfield. So I'm just a big fan of this Falcons pass defense, fourth best in the NFL. Taking the uh, opposing quarterback under their passing total has been a really, really good uh, good way to bet. So, All right, there's your six best bets, guys. Kenneth Walker over his rushing, Dobbs over his rushing, Taylor under his rushing, Jerome Ford over his rushing, DJ Moore over receiving, and Baker Mayfield under his passing. All right, guys, so what do we have up? We still have our UFC gold 5% play. That is up 
Our 5% play of the week just went up this morning in the NFL. The line looks stable. The weather looks great. So uh, it's good enough to fire away on. So grab that one. I don't see much movement in the line. So I think you're pretty good to get that. And then a college football best bet, of course, is up. If you want to use that promo for 30 days for $199, it's still up. No promo code needed. Just go to the profile page. Um, Just click on it. It's on the right side. We only run this special a couple times a year, guys. So um, we used to run it all the time, but they were like, no, we're just saving it for the whole website and uh, run it a couple times. So take advantage of it. All sports, all 5% plays, and we got two 5% plays that are up just for this weekend. So grab that. It, uh, no promo code needed. Just go to the player profile page. All righty. Fade of the day. This was me fading Bryce Harper. Give me his under one and a half. Uh, hits, runs, and RBIs at plus 115. He's only faced this starting pitcher, you know, four times. Okay, 0 for 4. What do we talk about with these big-name guys when teams decide to walk him? Doesn't it just crush their hitting props? Yeah, for sure. They walked him twice last game. This is six walks in the last four games, and he's 1-6 in in his last two games. Like, just, like, it's like, don't pitch to him. Like, if you, if you think he's the guy that's going to kill you, just don't pitch to him. And I love this plus money. I, I, I Like, he hit two, 250 uh, two games ago, and then he had no hits in the last game. So we talked about this, man. It's counterintuitive about, like, well, whoa, Bryce Harper under. It's like, yeah, <laughs> if they walk him, then he needs other bats to get him in. And what happened? They walked him twice. He only scored one run last game, and that was on a wild pitch. And he went under. So I'm going under. I, <laughs> yeah, it makes it awful hard when you have an over on a hitter prop in the MLB and you get walked and you oh. see your guy get walked twice. It's the kiss of death. It, it just it makes it so much harder. And you're just pressing in those. I mean, you see you feel like they're pressing in those couple of two or three it's other at bats that you have a chance to to <laughs> actually do some damage. In. And like you said, yeah, he just have to get driven in and they're on the road again tonight. They've been thriving at home, but. Uh, on the road's been a little bit of a different story. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna bank on a couple more walks uh, for Bryce Harper. So <laughs> let's take the under there. <laughs> Sleeper of the day, Zach Ertz. This was your Steve. What are we doing with Zach? So he's been under in four of six games on the season, and his high has been 56. And we saw a bit of the changing of the guard last week with Trey McBride. He set season highs in receptions with four, yards with 62 and snap share with 58%. We also saw Ertz have a season low snap share of 46%. It looks like they're phasing Ertz out here and moving McBride in. The The Seahawks have the ninth least yards allowed to opposing tight ends, and that's only a, about a little over 40 a game. And if McBride's going to be doing a little bit of damage here, I'm not sure how Ertz is going to get over 23 and a half. It's a really low number, but with him losing looks, and um, really basically falling short of this number for the majority of the season. We're going to take the under here. I also have a sneaky theory that they may just, like, why would you put too much wear and tear? What a nice little trade piece to a contender that doesn't have a yeah. tight end. You know, I mean, you get a late round pick for him, but it's something, especially if you got Trey McBride there. So uh, they, you know, maybe like, why would, why would we want to throw the ball to him 10 times and risk him getting hurt? So I think you're on the right track with the sleeper of the day. All right, stat of the day. I mean, Samaj P. Ryan has more receiving yards than Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> That's it. That's the stat. <laughs> yeah, we discovered this one yesterday. Looking, it was like, wait, what? Yeah, that's a real stat. So um, there's, really, there's really not much we can do betting-wise. I just thought this was one of the most stunning stats through this early part of the NFL season that, that I could what? find. What is P. Ryan third in um, <laughs> yeah, receiving yards for yeah, running backs? <laughs> you, I, like you said yesterday, you were like, you, you won't guess this one in 100. Get, and I really wouldn't have. It would have taken me forever to guess P. Ryan <laughs> yeah. as, as third in receiving yards in the league, you know? Stupidest. Like, like what? What and, happened? <laughs> and McCaffrey seems like, you know, it, it, just by memory, he seems like he had done so much damage. You know, like the, these huge plays. And a lot of them, I know a lot of them are on the ground, but through the air. Yeah, I mean, man. Feeding out McCaffrey, that's pretty amazing. 
Well, and I, like the, Brandon Ayuk is just have you know he just took the next step this year, so he's been a huge target. Like Kittle's been Kittle's been hit or miss, but sometimes he has been you know pretty pretty hit. And I mean, I'm looking here at Smaj P Ryan. He has two catches or more in every single game. Um, he's got two games with a, a 20 yard or, uh, plus reception and he's got 17 catches on 20 targets so far and he's averaging 10.8 yards per game so I, it's, just, it's just really really strange i'm sorry 10.8 yards per per catch so yeah. uh, this is a this is a very strange stat that we discovered yesterday when you and i were sitting here going over some <laughs> some research so <laughs> Alrighty, here we go. It is time for the survivor picks. If you have not put your survivor pick in the comment section, please do so. The link to the spreadsheet will be up there and we'll get that updated. So, uh, Steve, you, I think you probably would have gone with the Bills, but you've used them already. So I'm going to go with the Bills over the Patriots. Wasn't a great performance by the Bills against the Giants, but I thought the Giants just went all out. Um, kind of caught the Bills off guard there a little bit, and it's just not its not the year for the Patriots. We know that. So uh, Mac Jones, I don't think he's got what it takes to take advantage of this defense. Ramondre Stevenson just doesn't look great, and this coaching staff just looks looks completely lost on everything. So I'll go with the Bills. These are two teams just going in complete opposite directions. So give me the Bills over the Patriots, and you're going with most everyone else in the in – the, <laughs> In the in the comments section, listen, we're getting to the point where well, we've used a lot of the big name teams and got teams on by. So uh, you're going with the Seahawks. Yeah, this this week was a, a tough week with tough week. with the yeah with the first week with six buys. So and then you know we're losing teams left and right here because we're using the the who's who on a weekly basis. But it's the biggest spread available to me on the board once again. I'll roll with that. I feel like the Arizona defense gets overwhelmed here, and we were giving them credit early in the year for being looking a lot better than we thought they were. They were hanging around in games. They beat Dallas, but since then, it's been three straight blowouts. They face some tough competition, but it seems like they're reeling, and now you go on the roads of Seattle in this one. I'll, I like my chances with Seattle winning this game. I do, too. If I didn't go with the Bills, I was going with the Seahawks. No yeah, I, I mean, I like them both. The Bills are going to beat the Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> the Bills are going to beat the Brinks <laughs> off the Patriots, too. So, <laughs> Love it. Love it. So, All right, guys. Plays that are up. Reminder, college football best bet that is up 6-1 and one this season. We've got UFC 5% play, NFL 5% play. But if you just want all of them, use the promo. Actually, no promo code. Uh, just put it. Uh, just go to my pro- profile page. And you'll see 30 days for $199. Get you all plays, including all the 5%, uh, especially for this weekend. So, All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. We're going to be back Sunday morning to break down all the final player prop lines. It looks like the weather is going to be pretty decent for NFL uh, this weekend. Only the Giants game looks like there could be some wind. And... Get ready for Tuesday. Steve and I are going to do an NBA special preview, season preview on Tuesday. We normally are off on Tuesday, but we're going to go over some of our favorite team totals, some player props, and uh, just a bunch of bunch of fun stuff to get ready for NBA season. So good luck on all your plays. We'll see everyone Sunday morning, and we'll see you then. Good luck, guys.